When building the data pump solid state laser, you're going to be working with near infrared radiation, so it's important you wear safety glasses. Your eye is not going to be able to see the light that is emitted by the laser, and that can cause severe damage to your eye if it were to get into your eye and be focused by your lens. And because we can't see the light, we're going to need this. This is a fluorescent card that uh, glows orange in the presence of the near infrared light. And so we use this to detect when we have light coming out of our laser. The laser diode that will pump our neodymium and vanadate crystal has a gradient index lens on the end that focuses the output pump light just a few millimeters outside the housing. And what that means is that when we position our, our crystal, our laser crystal, it needs to be just a few millimeters away from the edge of that laser diode pump. It's also important that we center the pump on the laser diode crystal. So you never want to stick your eyes looking into the pump. Uh, I'm able to do that with the camera. And I can see the location of the crystal, and if I remove the crystal, you'll be able to see the location of the pump. And so the pump can be moved horizontally and vertically with these adjustment screws. And I want to uh, position that such that when I place the crystal on, I've centered it. The best way to do that is to put your head directly above and ensure that the uh, relative position in this direction of the two, the laser diode and the, the crystal match. And then put your head on the side and ensure that the height of the two match. Once we know the cavity parameters, the length and uh, mirrors that we'll be using, uh, we want to set it up to look something like this. And of course, we want the mirrors aligned so that they're uh, so that they're both normal to the optical axis. The problem is we're not going to have uh, the ability to do that until we have some reference to align them to. And so uh, we will start by using the helium neon laser that's on the opposite end of the bench. We can turn that on and we get a, a spot coming out of it. And we have an alignment guide that we can place on the rail. And if we adjust it so that the Heaney laser is passing through the hole in that alignment guide, then we'll see a retroreflected spot coming back that goes away when I block the path. So I know that that's the reflected spot coming back uh, from the mirror in my uh, cavity. So typically the way I will use this is to remove the rear mirror. So I say rear, that's measured relative to the laser diode that's pumping the system. So here is the near mirror. The spot is illuminating the center of that near mirror and is coming back. And I've adjusted the alignment of the near mirror so that that spot is coming straight back and is uh, superimposed on the, this outgoing spot, meaning I've retro-reflected the light. So now I know that this mirror, is its surface is normal to the, the Heaney beam that I'm using as a reference. So now I can insert my far mirror. And when I do, I'll see the retro-reflected spot from that far mirror as I adjust the alignment of that far mirror, the position of the retroreflected spot changes. And once I've got that retroreflecting through the pinhole, then I know that both mirrors have surfaces that are normal to the Heaney beam. And so I've established an optical axis for this cavity that is known. And that's where I expect the laser output to be. I can fine-tune the alignment by looking for these interference fringes that should be rings reflected from the, the cavity in the Heaney beam. That should get me close enough to optimal alignment to get the laser output uh, visible when I turn up the, the diode. And then final careful alignment of the cavity can occur using the output of the laser itself. Once you've coarsely aligned the mirrors to the Heaney beam, you're going to want to turn up the laser diode current to about 150 milliamps. Uh, if you don't see it at that point, it's a matter of uh, the cavity being misaligned, not lack of power in the pump. And what I can do is uh, 
adjust the tip or tilt of either mirror. I'm basically trying to guess what might need to be, uh, what alignment might need to be improved until I can see some output on my fluorescent card. And so I'm starting to see something now. And if you can see, there's sort of a ring pattern or multiple dots. And that suggests that there's some misalignment. As you adjust the alignment, you'll see that pattern change. And you want to try to hone in on a nice zero, zero spatial mode. And then once you've uh, achieved that, you can go about the process of tweaking each individual uh, adjustment to try to optimize the power coming out of it. I'll turn this up. Uh, to make it a little more visible on the, on the uh, video. And so you see a spot. That spot should be fairly well collimated, at least in the sense that unlike the light leaking through the system from the uh, pump diode, this spot should be clearly visible even as I go far away down the optical rail. If you wish to observe inner cavity frequency doubling, you can use this KTP crystal. And if you've left yourself enough space in the cavity to insert the crystal, you should be able to place it in, lock it in, turn on your laser, and with minimal adjustment, have green light coming out at roughly 532 nanometers. So at this point, I no longer need the fluorescent card to see the spot.